Now, I wonder how many uh, of you uh, would have heard or may even have said uh, this phrase, do as I say, not as I do. How many, maybe you can uh, type that in the chat or uh, give me an indication with your reaction. If you have ever found yourself uh, saying uh, that to somebody else. I confess that I have, uh, as a mother at times, uh, said, do as I say, not as I do. And sometimes we say that because we can know um, the theory behind something. We can know the right thing to do, even though we can find it really hard to put into practice. Throughout uh, today's reading, we hear, um, amongst other things, uh, Jesus saying that we need to be authentic, that we need at least to be trying to do those things that we are saying other people should do. We may not be perfect at it. Uh, it takes some time uh, to uh, do some of the, the things that we know are right. Uh, we often know the right thing to do but can find it really hard to do the right thing. Uh, but when we have a different set of standards for others than we have for ourselves, uh, that's when we have a problem. And that's uh, what we think of when we think of that word being a hypocrite where we don't hold ourselves to the same standard that we expect from others. Now, this term hypocrite, uh, which isn't actually part of our Bible reading, but if you kept reading uh, chapter 23, you would see Jesus use this term hypocrite repeatedly. And this word uh, comes from a stage actor in Greek. So in, in Greek, it meant a stage actor. The Greek word itself is made up of two Greek words that literally translate an interpreter from underneath. Now, this phrase may seem a little bit uh, unusual, an interpreter from underneath. But this makes more sense when we understand that actors in ancient Greek theatre wore large masks, um, not, not just small masks that just cover their face, but really large masks which uh, indicated which character they were playing. And so they interpreted the story from underneath their mask. There were play actors playing, wearing a mask and interpreting from underneath. It has been said that all the world is a stage and we are all actors in it. One man in his time plays many parts. As people, we do have different roles to play as we go through life. Uh, we may uh, be a child at some stage and we grow up to be a wife or a husband, uh, a partner. We grow up uh, to be a teacher or a um, a firefighter or a policeman or, or different um, roles that we may play. Each one of us takes on some of these different roles. The difficulty in life is playing each of those roles authentically, still being ourselves in each of those roles. Just recently, I started uh, watching The Crown on Netflix. Uh, and although the story is of Elizabeth and it's based on historical facts, um, the truth of it I'm not going to comment on. But in the story, in this representation, we see this tension uh, between Elizabeth, the young queen, a person, a daughter, a wife, a sister, a mother, a tension between her as, as that Elizabeth and the Elizabeth, the queen, this new role that she is in. 
this role of the crown. As I said, we all play different roles at different times. And for many of us, although not to the same extent as we see uh, with Elizabeth and Queen Elizabeth, there are tensions between our authentic selves and the roles or the jobs that we are in. Sometimes uh, that can create a real problem for us and we can feel uh, as if our role and who we are in our role is, is very different to the person who we are, our authentic selves. Sometimes in playing these roles, uh, much like actors, we can put on costumes that help us to play into the role, that help uh, modify our behaviour and uh, affect our behaviour as we play into a role of being this particular person um, or this particular uh, role. Examples are, are judges and lawyers with their robes and their wigs. There's the academic dress uh, of academics, of lecturers. There's the clerical or religious dress, such as what I'm wearing today. And to be honest, uh, the, the clerical dress, the alb and the stole, which I am wearing, I have uh, a love-hate relationship with. Uh, there are positives to it as well as some negatives to it. One of the times that I uh, do wear uh, my alb is for funeral services. I find at a funeral service uh, where it helps identify who the minister is and uh, the position that I have, if people need to come and speak to the minister, they can more readily identify me. And because a funeral service, there's lots of people gathered who haven't necessarily met the minister, unlike in uh, the church where uh, we've got regulars who come, uh, it means that I can stand out. And so there can be some positives in standing out. But there's also uh, can be some negatives, and we'll get to those in just a moment. But another positive about the alb is that it, uh, when I put it on, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing underneath so much. You can't see what I'm wearing underneath. And so I often do find uh, that at the end of a service, uh, when I've been wearing the alb, I'm more likely as people leave church um, to comment on something of the service, uh, something of the sermon, a prayer, something of the context of the service itself, rather than the dress or the skirt or the top that I'm wearing. So I find that can be a positive. When I very first uh, got my alb and I went into the church stores in Sydney, and I got them to measure it up and they were measuring, and, and it's quite long, the, the sleeves. And when you're also going to be playing with candles and uh, playing with the communion elements and you're worried about big bulky sleeves knocking things over and potentially setting fire, um, these things go through your mind. And so I did say, oh, it is quite long. Does it need to go down that long? And uh, the lady is who was measuring me up said, well, yes, um, we need to make sure that it covers your Rolex. And I thought, well, there's uh, some clergy and some other denominations that are getting paid a lot more uh, than the clergy in Uniting Churches. But it also uh, made me think about how by putting on uh, the alb, uh, we are Becoming average, which was the original idea of the owl. Any of the glitz and glam of whatever watch I may choose to wear, whatever uh, clothing I may wear, whether or not it is um, just tracksuit pants or 
some sort of brand label. It can't be seen. I've become uh, less about me and about what image I might want to portray and, and I become uh, more average. The problem with that, though, is over time, the Albert self has come to symbolise uh, power. As uh, religious leaders have abused their power, as um, they have uh, covered up also that abuse of power, which was uncovered and exposed by the Royal Commission, it has left society uh, not trusting. Uh, church leaders, and so it has now become a symbol of distrust. So our costumes, our uniforms uh, may have positives and they can help create identity, uh, make people know who's who, but they can also portray uh, misuse of power. We also in our Bible reading, saw that it's not just the, the costume of people that can uh, be a problem, but also um, the title. And Jesus warns against using titles. In our examples, we've seen some titles. Her Majesty, or Your Honour, or Reverend, or Father. But even without specialised uniforms or costumes, and without these specialised uh, titles, we can still create identities and false identities. In the Bible reading, uh, it mentioned the Pharisees were wearing phylacteries and also uh, the prayer shawls and the long tassels. These weren't things that were unique to the Pharisees. That wasn't their uniform or a Pharisee costume. That was something that uh, the Jewish people, the Israelite people would have worn. Jesus would have worn these things. The issue with the Pharisees was that they uh, wore them elaborately. Uh, instead of having... Uh, a phylactery that was small. It's a leather box cube shaped that's bound to a person's hand or to the forehead with leather bands. Instead of having little discreet ones, the Pharisees had nice big ones that made everyone see them and they stood out. The same with their prayer straws, with the, the extra long tassels so that they would stand out and look special. It was about being showy and about um, raising themselves above the others. So they were using the everyday things but abusing that use to elevate themselves above others. Today, we still can create images of ourselves and present ourselves to the world in a way that... Um, lifts us or that attempts to lift us above others. And we see this particularly within social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, where we're not just taking uh, photos uh, of what we naturally look like when we wake up in the morning, but we're taking selfies with just the right lighting, posing in just the right way to get just the right angle, just the right background, using a soft filter to just soften the edges a little or maybe even we touch up our photos to take away the blemish and take away this and that. And we present to the world a false image. Now, that's our, our physical image, but we also present to the world false uh, images in relation to some of the other things that we talked about, posting about the new great uh, thing that we just bought, the new great TV, the new great car, the new great whatever, uh, the new great job that we've just landed, all of these different things to elevate ourselves, to make us look good, showing off our good and polished bits to the rest of the world. 
we can hide under these images. We can be guilty of being these play actors, these hypocrites. But Jesus, Jesus calls us to honest centre stage living, of being honest about who we are with ourselves and with others. Jesus calls us to the way of Jesus, that we are to live the way of Jesus, to live the humble way, that we are to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. That we are not to be about fitting in and getting approval. Uh, it's not about seeing how many likes we get on Facebook. But it's about doing what is right. And it's about doing it in love for God and love of neighbour. It's not about building ourselves up so that we look good at the detriment of others as we stack people and we stand on top of them all just like in Gürtel, the turtle, but about the well-being of all. Jesus warns us against the hypocrisy and the burden that it creates. It's a burden that we create for ourselves as we set the bar higher and higher and as we uh, continue to strive to be just as good as, if not better than, the Joneses. And it creates for others a burden as they too try to live up to the images that others uh, project. Jesus calls us to be authentic, to live lives that are humble and authentic. Jesus calls us to be who we are. We don't need to hide our imperfections. We don't need to be presenting an image that we are perfect and that we have it all together. We are to embrace our imperfection. And rather than hide them, to show them, to live into the vulnerability that being imperfect is. For blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. In Japan, there is an art called kintsuji. It translates more or less as joining with gold. Broken pottery is taken and is repaired with the seam of lacquer and precious metal. As you can see in the images up on your screen, uh, these once broken pots are put back together using this seam of lacquer and precious metal. Rather than using super glue and trying to squeeze those pieces together as close as you can to minimise the crack and make it look like it isn't there at all. This approach emphasises the brokenness rather than tries to hide it. It beautifies the breakage and treats it as an important part of the object's history. The broken pot is not something to discard but become something even more precious than it was before. We, as broken, imperfect people, need to celebrate our brokenness, need to recognise that God is that uh, glue uh, that is cementing us together, that in our brokenness, that is where God shines through. That is where humility and love and vulnerability can shine through. The Reverend Boltzweber said, so much of spirituality is about sort of, sort of sanding ourselves down, smoothing ourselves out so that we're nice and shiny. 
But the fact is that I think the jagged edges of our humanity are what actually connect us to God and to one another. Our beauty is in our imperfection, in our rough and jagged edges, in our brokenness, which God renews. May we be willing to celebrate our broken edges. May we be willing to show our broken edges to the world. May we be willing to be humble and vulnerable as we model the way of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, grant us courage to speak the truth when it is uncomfortable. Grace to live quietly when we would like to be noticed. Perseverance to do ordinary tasks well, rather than seek glory in the spectacular. Confidence to entrust our strengths and weaknesses to you. Integrity to pray as we can, not as we think we ought to. And the joy of knowing that no praise, no privilege, no position matter more than being surrounded by your love and faithfulness every day. Amen. Although we are not taking up a physical offering at this time, there are people that are still giving to the life of the church, electronically and also through service and time. So we pray now for the offering that people make. Let's pray. Loving God, you call us by name, bringing us deeper into you, into community, into love. We thank you for the gift of this and hold our hands humbly, offering what we have, knowing that you receive what we give, even when it's very little. We pray you may bless our offering and multiply it. Amen. As we now prepare to enter into a time uh, of communion, uh, we are going to hear and invite you to join in this song if uh, you would like to, this song by the many, All Belong Here. 